this is the most high-profile murder case in British history. You and Ms. Howe are defending the accused terrorist from the government. And you're from the New York Times. I don't speak to journalists about trials relating to matters of national security. The sense of tension and paranoia in this thing is is ridiculous and yeah. palpable. It just sort of covers everything. I don't think you're necessarily losing anything by no, not No, I think it's this. a really good point. I think quite often sometimes when when you go into a large action beat, what you're actually doing is letting the audience off the hook. Mm. It's quite often that's the moment in which you sit back and reach for the popcorn and get to take a breath. But if there's things that you, you're forced to concentrate on, there are things that you're forced to remain engaged with, I think it's the opposite, actually. I think, I think the audience, the potential for drama and tension is, is actually amplified by not having too much of that. So I think that what we set out was to, to make was, was an adult, intelligent thriller, which, uh, which tries to reflect the way the world is right now. And I think the, the, the film looks at a situation in the English legal system where some of the dilemmas that are facing democracies are sort of thrown into sharp relief, which is to what extent are we happy um, that, that the government would occasionally break the law in order to protect the security of its, of its citizens. And if they do break the law in protecting security, are they undermining the very thing that they're trying to right. protect. There are people who really want a conviction here, so if you're ever feeling uh, bullied or intimidated... Oh, I can cope with that, thank you. Or threatened. Threatened? And what do you mean by that, exactly? You can give me a call. And what will you do? I enjoyed the fact that your character, Claudia, starts the film with great confidence, and she calls out an MIF-5 agent, he's posing as something else, and yes. she's got a great showing of her hand in court yeah. scene, and she's consistently rewarded with attacks and threats and just being shoved <laughs> back down. She's totally outmatched by yeah. forces larger than herself in a way. Yeah, well, I think I think the film poses a um, a conspiracy theory, but it's 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 an outcome that is is actually quite valid in the societies we're living in, where mm -hmm. essentially there is this tension between what we want for a democracy to function and our civil liberties, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. and what we want to live in a state that ensures national security. Would you please inform the lady opposite that I have first called upon your services and expertise? Well, perhaps in all the excitement, Mr. Rose has forgotten that there is a special advocate on this case and that we are both representing the defendant. I want to eat my lunch. I was here first. Even though it's implied that they might still have some feelings for each other, the film never goes into a film cliche movie mm -hmm. relationship. It's much more nuanced and complicated and real, yes. and that's hugely appealing to me. That had to have been for you. Definitely, and we really watched that, and, and we, we really tried to stay true to that from the beginning. The early draft was very much of that tone, and it was very important to me that, that we, we stayed in that, in, that, in that reign and that it didn't suddenly turn into an audience-pleasing uh, moment. It's a little bit more old-fashioned. It's mm -hmm. a bit more like unrequited love, I guess. And um, you know, I think it's nice to not underestimate the the audience's ability to to go with that. Dump your bag. Dump everything. Get out of there now. There are powers at play that neither you nor I may even hope to control. 